Welcome to the Out the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Spencer. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight, as always, we are socially distanced. Even you guys are like, what, 45 minutes apart? Uh, Uh, 45 minutes on a bad day. Okay. Depends what car Uh, Ross has that week. That makes sense. Um, I don't even have my show notes up, so I don't know what to say. I normally look over the, how many times have I said this shit? Off-road. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I guess about anything in off-road. Um, you guys are in the Northeast. I'm in the Midwest, which is no longer the Arctic Circle. Finally, it's, it, it is hilarious how it's weird. 30 degrees and then 40 degrees can feel like an absolute heat wave when it's minus 11 Right. And with the real feel of negative 27 or like we were approaching the, the range of the thermostat where it doesn't matter if you're in Celsius or Fahrenheit, like negative 40 is negative 40 on both mm. of them. Like just mm-hmm. fucking miserable. Um, yeah. It's weird because we're further north than you. Like we would to go to drive by to Kansas a lot. City, it's, it's, it's a pretty Southwest trajectory, but the yeah. jet stream and the the just general nature of uh of weather patterns means that uh we don't we don't get that as bad as you do seems like no, we always get also a couple days a after large you. body of water nearby that helps regulate yeah. the temperature i sent my dad and spent an amazing picture a couple weeks back of the long island sound and long island and then like the new england area where you could see exactly where the water was making everything warm and then where it was perfectly divided into wintry mix and then snow. It's, it was so cool. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, actuality, what you're seeing on the ground and what they measure at the atmosphere where radar is taken are two different things, but these are all very, very different things from what Chris is experiencing yeah. in uh, in the middle of the country, which is the middle of fucking, you know. Today is the first day where it just rained. It didn't then become an ice storm or it didn't sleet or snow or just be sub whatever. Like it just rained today and it was almost like, but it was like <clears throat> incredibly dense fog. We're like, can we just get a sunny day in 45? Like, just give me... But because the temperatures did go back above freezing, like now it's our version of a mud season. Like the snow, mm, snow there's still four yeah. inches of snow on the ground that is now melting off for the mm-hmm. last three weeks. And so like the, the kids walking across the field to go to the elementary school is my daughter fell down three times a day on the way home. So I got home. She's like, why'd she change her pants? I was like, well, she was a little damp. Like she, you know, we had to, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, at least you got a couple of laughs out of it. Hopefully. Oh, she wasn't laughing. <laughs> Nobody was laughing. But you were. Were you though? No. I watched, because my, it's your... I watched my daughter trip three times a day on in the hallway in daycare, and I thought it was the funniest thing ever. Dude, yeah, that's because your daughter's not at the point to be like, <laughs> I hate you for laughing at me yet. Like, that's by five, that's there, Ross. Like, you're not. <laughs> okay, yeah, I have a little time between now and then. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, all the snow on my driveway, because I didn't shovel my driveway, which we'll get to this, but. That was very much to my detriment over uh, the last 48 hours or so. Uh, but it all melted, and tonight it's all going to freeze. So after this show, I'm going to go out with my uh, my little salty boy and attack. <laughs> we attack. So that was the crazy part is like Monday, it actually like <clears throat> it was an ice storm on Monday. Like there was a tenth of an inch of ice on top of all of the snow and the driveway. So like everybody's driveway is clear because the snow was two weeks ago. It's just been crazy cold. It's just been hanging around. But like I, Sarah left for work and I watched her drift two thirds of the driveway to the street (laughs) with none of the wheels spinning. Like she was four wheel drifting. (laughs) Like a 10th of an inch of ice is enough to like disable a neighborhood. Did you guys see Seattle over the last few? Like, (laughs) dude, it's been everywhere. There have been clips of videos everywhere of people like the fire truck was the biggest one i think yeah. was that seattle where the fire truck that was, was just crazy. zipping yeah. around was like, that was terrifying hills. yeah so much weight moving that fast that guy came in with velocity though like maybe should have approached the situation knowing that there's ice with a little less the, speed the best was maybe in that video the, weighed more yeah the best was the video 
in uh in that one the guy screaming in the background why do you come down this road <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. i bet he's asking the same probably. question now too probably yeah. like who covers like, insurance in that instance is it just like the fire department the yeah. city yeah. whoever yeah whoever owns the truck technically oh, yeah. like oh, yeah, then, you know, i mean based on every cop show i've ever seen anytime one of the departments fuck something up that's the city that pays so i don't know if that's real or not mm, tax yeah, dollars so tv shows definitely <laughs> yeah definitely some of those um, are documentaries. That's actually my favorite running joke is to call anything that is actually fiction a documentary. <laughs> like I saw the sweet documentary about dinosaurs the other day called Jurassic Park. It's awesome. Oh, Loved man. It. <laughs> That's the best. Did, did you see the the follow-up documentary, Jurassic World? Or Aquaman? Mm, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. Weirdest story ever. Last night, I was struggling a little bit. I watched Aquaman on mute <laughs> with the captions on. Oh, boy. No idea why. Just yeah. music in my ears. It was way more entertaining just reading it. It's that pretty is, good. Pretty good effect. That is, that is, I don't know what to say about that. Um, it's called ADHD, Ross. It, he speaking can do of struggle, things at once. Speaking of struggle and nothing to do with anything, I watched a movie called Contagion recently. Oh, no, thank you. It came out quite a long time before the pandemic, yeah. and the parallels are um, disturbing. I, so, I remember Contagion references at the beginning of the pandemic, and I'm not a horror movie guy. It went, it went from like in the 700s on the IMDb like click list to in to number seven, yeah. like that week in 2020. <laughs> so, anyways, let's let's um talk about some stuff that we usually talk about which you're doing yours you're doing mine where are you going uh yeah let me get my shit out of the way first so the gx battery so the the battery <laughs> in the truck died uh what was it six weeks ago we talked about this and i got it charged like i i jumped it myself and then i kind of just let the truck charge itself um and i had no problem for all of that time until this past Saturday. And then I went to start it and it was like, it wasn't even like you push the button and the lights come on and it starts to crank. It was just like push the button. And it was like eh, pfft, dead. <laughs> so uh, I went to Costco and got myself a nice $108 interstate uh, 27F, which replacing the stock 24 class battery. So it's bigger. It's got more, cranking amps more cold cranking amps um does it fit it, it does fit the interesting thing and the reason i'm talking about this is because with <clears throat> the gx 470 lexus used apparently they used a 27f and then for the uh 460 they used the same battery tray but they bid the battery out to the lowest bidder which gave them a 24 <laughs> class battery. So they put a smaller battery in the bigger tray. So the solution is you go and just buy the bigger battery. So I did that and it works great when the truck's very happy. Um, so until you yeah. let it sit for another, how many months? No, I am. I, I don't have any press cars lined up, which I should probably email Eric because Spen, we are due for our annual Massachusetts Mecca. Um, we do an, yeah. a, a yearly run. Two years ago, Spen and I went to Massachusetts with the Jaguar uh, F Pace SVR. So that, and, that was the wait. That was the tiny road with the ice <laughs> shelf and your summer tires, right? It wasn't a road. It was a state park. Uh, with a trail that we drove down, and it was it was on winters technically. Um, and Chris, that was one of those like minus five degree wind chill days. It was, was like I really so got to get cold. out of this right now and spot him through this. <laughs> it was so cold. So two years ago we did that in a very very blue SVR. Last year, uh, my dad Spen and I took the Cadillac CT5 V Blackwing up to the same area. Avoided also very park, blue. Just got some beer and and mobbed home, but it's it's, I mean, this time of year in the Northeast, it's if you get out of the your normal loop to work and home, like any of that is is amazing. 
Um, so yeah, we should should get on that. Anyways, how did that come up? Why did why, why are we talking about that? I oh, asked Chris, if you were gonna keep driving the GX, and you were like, oh, "I don't have any press cars," and yeah. you were like, "I gotta need to find a press car for Sorry, this trip." Tangents of tangents. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the GX, I'm I'm still driving the GX. I have um, a set of BFGs to go on, and again, thank you to BFG. They will go on. Span, I need to talk to your dude at uh, Mavis because I stopped into the town fair that's right next to my house today, yep. and they were like, "We won't." Nope, you're bringing your own tires. No. What? Just, just no. Seriously? They will only do tires if you buy them there. Oh, dicks. <laughs> so, that's yeah. Bad. I'll give you the guy's name. Call him tomorrow. So I might try to drop it off. Um, sometime. I feel like most Switch. Mavis places that I called because I called a couple of them. They were like, "Yeah, no problem. Just drop it off whenever." Yeah. I think Town Fair is more of like because Mavis is like national, I think. Yeah. And you, Town you guys is, have not set a brand that I'm familiar with yet here. <laughs> Ma- Mavis reaches broader than Town Fair. Town Fair is like yeah. Connecticut, Northeast. Yeah, yeah Connecticut. It's pretty Connecticut. A little bit of New York. It's yeah. Um. Anyways, that's what that. do you guys have? Like Pep Boys. <laughs> Pep Boys. <laughs> uh, no Pep Boys. Firestone. Jiffy Lube. Um, oh, Chris, did you? I mean, that? everybody got a Jiffy Lube. Did you Jimmy hear that Lube. Come and Go got purchased and they're changing the name? Go and Come? Uh, by Maverick bought them. Maverick they're, was saying no more. They were, well, they're gonna the story the I saw wasn't Come that they weren't going to change the name of the existing ones, it's that they would no longer be producing more Come and Goes. They would then be oh, Maverick was stations moving forward. Under the impression they were rebranding the franchises. Sure. Anyway, I'm okay anyways. with this. To, uh, to be honest, the Maverick I, stations I normally find out West are like, and you guys aren't going to get this reference because it's another Midwest ones, are similar to a Quick Trip. And that's important yeah, to me because Quick Trip is magical and you guys don't have them. Yeah. You, it's like a Wawa. Oh, uh, be still my way. Wawa makes, Wawa. Wawa's like, if, if there was a place to stop on a road <laughs> trip, Wawa would be the place. Yeah. Right. all your needs uh for most of your needs most of your needs <laughs> <laughs> for all your needs it's the uh what's the texas one is it bucky's, bucky's. the one with the beaver mascot yeah, that's bucky's. the all your needs because yeah. it's like half a walmart inside a gas station it's like i mean for all intents and purposes texas is the walmart of the united states so ta-da okay moving on yeah i think so yeah i'm not gonna argue that. Um, <laughs> guns and everything else yeah for for uh, for the nerds out there, <clears throat> I've been playing for the last few days with the Axial AX24, uh, the the twenty fourth scale RC crawler. Which is that um, this thing that says X XC one on it? Yes, it's this thing that I sent you pictures of. It is a tiny little thing uh, with four wheel steer, which I did purchase with my own money. Um, and let the record show. I purchased two of them. That black one that you're looking at with black and green, the first one I bought because it is our podcast colors. Um, <laughs> that one got sent back because the the front drive shaft basically moved the whole thing as it was like you drive forward and the whole thing would wobble um, because the front drive shaft was so unbalanced. But it, these are really cool little things um, for 150 bucks. It has four wheel steer, which is awesome, and uh, like full four link long travel suspension, which for like RCs and Spen knows how now deep into the nerdisms of this I am. Like that's it's it's pretty cool for 150 bucks, you know. Um, and it's got like it has factory rock lights <laughs> which is so cool um which that was the image i just pulled up was your rock lights showing it yeah off. yeah in the dark the rock lights are red uh and you know four wheel steer and long travel suspension is amazing especially for like 150 bucks but the body itself is like the cheapest of cheap walmart special like if it was a $25 car, you know, then it would be 
overpriced kind of body. Um, and the difference in quality between this orange one and the black one that showed up first is like, the, so you can hear the rear servo, hear that barely. The black one, yeah. like you turn it and you can hear it like almost across my house. And given I have a small house, but there are extreme variations in the quality, which is disappointing as I, for a deeper into this RC nerdiness. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, cause like four wheel store, the difference in, I measured it, difference in turning radius between this thing in just front wheel steer. It was 35 inches for a turning circle in front wheel steer. And in four wheel steer, it was 16 and a half. So if you think about that in the terms of your truck, like if you have a 40 foot turning circle on a truck, which is a good turning circle, like some of the 2,500 off-road trucks have like 50 something. Yeah, it sounds like power wagon numbers. If you could cut that in half, like that's the, that's what people get from going from a standard like street truck to like a buggy that they off road with. And that's what this thing is supposed to do. Um, but it has the construction of something that costs like $55. So, so, so that's that. You're enjoying them, but not recommending them. I don't recommend them. Um, Spend knows I have an axial Can Am Maverick thing that we've beaten the absolute shit out of, and yes. uh, yeah, no, I, I I might keep this one because the four wheel steer is amazing. If you have a house that's less than twelve hundred square feet, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, we're we're, we're probably going to talk about RC stuff a little more because like you know when you're not necessarily homebound but like kind of stuck in the same area you know more or less like the rc stuff is a lot of fun i will say that i was like i was pretty skeptical of at first i was like I feel like this is like what five-year-olds do you know and i went over to ross's a few what was that a few weeks ago and we were playing with that so it's like Two just play ago. with it and i was like spend drove the oh my RC god this is so much fun <laughs> Yeah, spent, I, I gave Sven the 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 C two X Mojave from RC four wheel drive. Which I was is like, like, I can do so many things crawler. with this. Yeah, I, was like, I can do so crawler. many things and not cause damage that I actually care about. Exactly. So I sent Chris this, this picture thing? of okay. the one on the. So I'm making an RTI ramp. Yes, that is that is the one. Um, is that our tech deck thing? That is so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wasn't no it wasn't this past week and two weekends ago at my parents' house I was just like going through random stuff in the basement I was like wait a minute these are my old like uh, it's like thirteen maybe twelve when those finger skateboard things were a thing and I had like a skateboard park for fingers um, because I was not competent <laughs> enough to do it with my actual body so I had to do it with my fingers uh, yeah you so did. <laughs> What? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Hey. hey. So, uh, yeah. So I'm building. I'm. I'm in the process of building an RTI ramp uh, for these things, and this is the C2X on the RTI ramp. So I'm going to do 20 degree, which is the standard. Like, it's usually 20 to 30, but like 20 is the standard. Um. So what I'm hearing you say is don't tell Dan Edmonds about this because he'll also do his own version of RTX yeah, no. or RC. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm doing I'm doing the less expensive, uh, less labor and psychologically intensive version of what Dan does. So so I'm gonna start expecting off road content videos. <laughs> for the YouTube channel. <laughs> RC RTI. You heard it here first. Yeah. Trademark. Trademark. Hashtag RC RTI. But like it's, yeah. you know, it's it's cool stuff to think about because like I have, you know, we've talked about like the Traxxas thing that Spence played with before and that C2X and then there's this thing that like it flexes 
basically completely vertically. I don't know if the camera picks that up, but like yeah. it'll go almost completely vertical with the front suspension, you know? So And the anyways. huge difference in size between them. Like oh. <laughs> I knew that was going to as soon as it came oh. out of my mouth. Um, that. <laughs> I'm going so to tell you right now, there's clear. a lot of room on Instagram if you want to start hashtagging some RCRTI. There are only 22 total posts for the hashtag. None of them right. are vehicle-based whatsoever. Rick Spain, you got that protractor? <laughs> let's yeah. let's, uh, let's actually build one. We could, protractor. We could... <laughs> Sorry, that's a word I haven't heard in years. <laughs> <laughs> protractor. That was my nickname in math class. <laughs> <laughs> Go to my calculator and retired my fellow nerds to the nerdery. Oh man! I thought it was the pendulum. <laughs> Heard pendulum lately. Huh? Yeah. You know, <laughs> they used to call me TI eighty three plus. Then they Dude. started calling me protractor. <laughs> I, I was a, horrible it, at math. These don't even make. These jokes don't even. Make no, sense. they don't. Um, I saw a lady's post the other day where she was in the store and she was looking at graphing calculators and she was like, how the hell is a TI-83 still $115? It was $115 when I was in high school. Yeah. 25 yeah. years later, it's still $150. How? Everything else has gotten cheaper. Hey, if, if first of all, Texas Instruments, they don't need money. Uh, second of all, don't if God know. Wants, their if military contracts are doing enough. If anybody wants to buy a, a TI-83 Plus for 115 bucks, hit me up. I'll sell it to you. Uh, okay, sure moving on. be a great deal. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk Magna Ride. Fuck no. Um, we're getting rid <laughs> of that <laughs> shit. Um, no, I... So oh, uh, fu- okay, fuck no as in buy Magna Ride. Like, yeah, okay. like all, all of it's... I. <laughs> If you're watching the YouTube live stream, my friend John has already like said like you need a uh, Yukon, Chris, because he got a Yukon that I didn't tell him to buy. He did that on his own, uh, and then I've been like slowly uh, bringing him into the world of disposable GM vehicles. Um, mm, spend but my response to him when he said spend I needed a Yukon spend time and, with my Avalanche, so he knows yeah. all about that. Yeah, yeah. I told him I'm reporting this comment. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So the Suburban, while it is the only vehicle that fits all six of us and and then all of the other bullshit that we have to carry around is just been a pile of suck lately. Like I knew the brakes were getting ready to go. Um, I rock auto brakes, uh, rotors and pads showed up today for um, what would have been a quarter of the cost that was quoted for somebody else to do them. And what'd you order? So. Do what? Uh, power stop. Spen, what did I tell you to order? Yeah, no, I, I need brakes. Very Spen badly. needs brakes on the 400. And, I, and okay. the first thing I said was get the ZXX kit from Power Stop. And then like less than 36 hours later, you texted me and were like, I got, I got Power Stop brakes. I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> Do it, it like Rock Auto bundles it. Like it's like, this is what it's, you did. Like this is like, it's here's the four rotors here's the eight pads like yeah here's the price and, of what it would be to do oem stuff and then yeah like two-thirds or half of that and it's actually like good shit it is good shit and i'm pretty sure the ups guy was pissed off at me because he like half drove through my yard to like put the boxes on the porch today i was like yeah they're not light sorry dude like it doesn't he sh- he should all like dude. One of them is heavy as fuck. Like it is. Yeah, but he that's just a guy hating his life. That's not, yeah. Well, it's he's dropping heavier shit off, right, Spen? Yes. At his house. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, pads and rotors are here. I will add those to the suburban eventually. It's not catastrophic failure yet on those, but I had a cylinder uh, take a shit. Um, let's see here, number six. So the fuel injector, six. yeah, the fuel injector, injector on injector. number six. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, Stopped working. Those. Had power, had fuel, no spray spray, which is dumb shit. So I got that replaced. Uh, they also did a... Um, oh, you did replace they... the injector? I did, yeah. I haven't... I haven't oh, like, I needed that. it to work, Ross. <laughs> like, I didn't have time to wait for uh, STP to show up. Um and then we did spark plug wires because those are uh, spark plugs and spark plug wires. 
those are original with 194,000 miles. It was time to do that. Um, and then I knew it was an existing issue, but the heater hoses were leaking and that's where I was losing coolant. So those were replaced hmm. and my like oil cooling cruiser. lines. Yeah. My oil cooling lines were showing oil on the outside. So those were replaced. So the truck is back and functioning, but before it did all of this, I've had a, we've talked about before about the issue with the road noise up on the driver's left front. Um, yep. Yep. We've and I just got an email sets tonight. Of tires. Yep. Yeah. I, with the brand new set of tires, it's still making a bunch of noise. I got my confirmation email tonight that the wheel, um, fuck, what are they called? Wheel assemblies? What am I? No. Hub. Wheel bearing assemblies. Wheel bearing wheel bearing, assemblies. Yeah. It, it's, it's a pressed in bearing inside the hub. So there's yes. two in the same, right? Right. I'm, I'm making that up. That's... It's basically all one. Basically, I'm doing three bolts and it's all going on. I'm doing ABS yeah. wire and I'm done. Yeah. Um, or you could and... like press it out, press another one in and it's... Yeah, I don't have to do that. I just have to do just, bolts. Just... I'm good with bolts. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So you're ordering the whole assembly? Yeah. 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 Because it can... Spen, do you know a... anything about this? Have you, have you <laughs> dealt with this on the back end of any side-by-side -side in the past, you know, 12 months? Like six times on the same quad yep. <laughs> six mm -hmm. times that's a lot um, yeah we've, we've gone through this it's because the pressing of the bearing into the hub the labor that that requires versus the replacement of the actual whole encapsulated two pieces hub. <laughs> it's the it's like the labor or the you know what's the lesser of two evils so right My, mine's way easier than that it's just three bolts so I'm gonna do yeah those. well six because i'm gonna do both sides um okay good. but i i ordered so i ordered them from kryptonite products which i found through other suburban stuff um, and the reason I purchased them is uh, they come with a no fine print lifetime warranty that literally says this warranty is against any manufacturer defects, premature wear or breakage. And then it says race it, jump it, off road it, wreck it, lift it. I think you get it. We don't care if you can break it. We'll replace it. That's amazing. Yeah. I was, that I, might be the I'm best warranty board. I've ever heard. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I'm on board with all of this. That's so That's straightforward. That's the kind of people that we want building all of our shit. Right. So those are on the way. Um, I had a little bit of a panic moment because after I ordered them, I saw something that was like, hey, it could be eight, up to eight weeks before your stuff shipped. Uh, it's only been a couple of weeks. And I think I did get the email today for the shipping confirmation. So the label's been created. Um, I didn't see it in FedEx's system yet, though, so it better fucking get here soon. That just means they um, created the label, but they haven't actually had it scanned and put into a vehicle right. for so, movement yet. But my label's <clears throat> created, so it better get here before. I got road trips coming up, so I need this stuff. <laughs> Ooh, um, and then where are you, I had where an... are you road tripping. Nah, we'll get into that. You later. can tell me. In, yeah, yeah. Northeast. I, 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 I just, I just spent most of my day talking about road trips and shit. So nothing. Nowhere cool, Ross. Nowhere cool. <laughs> I genuinely doubt that. But oh, I a hundred percent promise you, I it's not somewhere I want to go. So Do you, it's gonna go start with <laughs> F and end with Florida. No. I was hoping you were going to say white? this. I hate this. Is it Texas? I, I, no. I, if it was Texas, I'd go down and see Dave. Ooh. I do need to send him um, another email. Yeah, so we should get Dave. I was actually thinking about him. I was going to text him earlier, and I don't know why, but there's a big park in Texas that we need to go. It's not Big Bend. Is it Big Bend? Big Bend is way down on the southwest side of Texas. It's like That's literally the, the Rio Grande. About. Yeah, Big Bend National beautiful. Park. Yes. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Do you know how far away that is? <laughs> oh, you might as well just go to Mexico. Like, we might, we should do Baja. Yeah, well, like, would be closer. I don't If you go around. So. Yeah, you got to go like around uh, Texas to get down to Baja. So. Yeah, but if you go by highway to get to Big Bend, like, you're going. I can, it, like, you're Hoffmeister kinking it. 
Anyways. It's two days of driving either way is all I know. So it's a, more than two days from here. Well, Bob. for you, it's like seven and a half weeks. Take a helicopter. Yeah. Oh, nah. But you could, you could, a Pioneer wagon train would get you there sooner, Russ. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not going to make the uh, Oregon Trail jokes. Anyways. You can. It's all right. Who has dysentery? Yeah, not me. You died not in it. malaria. Yeah, I'm on the Seven trail. Seven of your family members <laughs> died fording the river. We get it. It's not gone well. Yep. So anyway, it's snowing. the other thing. <laughs> the other thing that's wrong with the suburban is that the front mag ride struts were starting to leak. We that was identified a while back, a little bit ago. Um, I think when I put the Michelin's on, that's when it was first reported to me that that was an mm -hmm. issue. And it has gotten worse and worse and worse. Which, and it, in all fairness, Magna Ride on the performance cars, 100,000 miles on them is like, that's that's good. So you're on, coming up on two. Yeah, on the SUVs, they were only getting like 60,000 miles out of them. I don't, I have not, so I got the truck at like 120 something thousand miles on it. <laughs> I don't know when they were replaced last. I'm assuming before that. So I'm at anywhere from like 70 to 80,000 miles on these things. Mm. A lot of highway. A lot of, a lot of shitty roads. I yeah, they're I mean, just shitting the bed. And I'm I'm miserable in the truck right now. Like any bump like the front end bounces a little like I just I I hate driving. It. I've got the drone of whatever wheel hub is dying. And it's mm -hmm. like, I, we drove the Sequoia to the last wrestling event because I was like, I'm not, I don't want to drive the Suburban anymore. So I have found a gentleman in Florida named Max. He and I had a nice conversation today. Um, I'm going to be talking more about Max and Max's products because he makes a bypass kit for Magnum Ride equipped vehicles. Um, it is amazing from what I can tell. You literally plug this piece into the OBD2 and it has Can a module. Ex first of two quick things. Explain in <laughs> extreme brevity what Magnaride is and extreme explain in extreme brevity why somebody would need a Magnaride bypass. So see, I don't oh the bypass I totally get. So Magnaride is the brand term for what everyone else calls magnetic ride control. So the shocks have some type of electricity that runs through them that magnetizes the fluid in it that helps to stiffen it up before bumps mm -hmm. or things and all that shit. They have tiny little pieces it also, of metal with electricity going through them and right. they use that to electronically yeah. control please, the stiffness and the softness by computers. Please go find Jason Fenske's video on Engineering Explained because he had to have done it at some point in all of his There's YouTube videos. There's people a lot smarter videos. than us. Yes, I am not the... I, I was going to say I'm not the science teacher, but I literally was. <laughs> Um, I'm just Florida not. of all places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but only for a little bit. Um, yeah. You should have stayed. You might have done some good. You Why have would not you want spent to do enough that? time in Florida. Like that is not. There's no helping Florida. You might have done enough good to fill one of Ron DeSantis's fucking high Florida, Florida man exists. There is no stopping Florida. There's no amount of Midwest educators that you could bring down there that will change. Florida. Florida man is real. You cannot. Not to alienate there, any there, listeners. There's a... Uh, my favorite part is show. every listener in Florida right now understands exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, so. Also, sad, sad New Hampshire face. <laughs> what were you going to say, Spen? There's a, uh, there's a morning drive sports talk show in New York that every Thursday they have a segment called Did It Happen in Florida? <laughs> where they just yeah. tell you a, a, an absolutely bonkers story. It's like, did this happen in Florida? And they all guess. And it's like, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like 95% yeah. of the an, time it did happen, didn't it? That guy took an Uber to the bank to rob it and then tried to take the Uber home. <laughs> the guy in his underwear watcher, walking his pet alligator through the convenience store. Yeah, all of that shit is real. Like it, oh, yeah. I, anyway, I, I don't want to get too far down a rabbit hole of Florida stuff, but... <laughs> um, well, the no nice, the nice gentleman I'm talking to about the Magnaride replacement is based in Florida. Um, so the reason you need a bypass is the vehicle is wired 
to talk to the suspension. The suspension talks to the vehicle, the vehicle talks to the suspension. It knows the, the role of the body, all of that stuff to make sure it stiffens up appropriately. What's the, um, on the old forerunners, Ross, what was it? X, X, R, E, A, S. S, X, R, E, S. Yeah. And it's KDS, which became KDSS. KDSS. Which, but, but magnetic rod is smarter than that. Yes, it is. It is smarter than that. KDSS is totally reactionary and uh, magnetic rod control. It's, It's pretty reactionary, but it has the capacity to be proactive like right it knows that something's happening so if, it can do things on the other it, and yeah, if the forest. front tire <laughs> if the front tire experienced something it can prepare the back tire for the for that experience yeah and, and that, that, that is part speed, of that system as well versus like at speed ADSS yeah. is it's not doing that at, like it'll do body it'll prevent body roll at speed but it won't do opposite corner stuff at at speed right so it's nice, but it is when it is failing, it, it's awful. And it and they fail fairly frequently. 60,000 miles is the number I found a lot of times for the, the SUVs, mainly because like mm-hmm. the SUVs just weigh so much. Yeah, um, they beat those more. systems up. Yeah, and, I and will say, just dy- dynamically, it's not good in them either. Uh, the Forerunner that I bought from you, I took the x system off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it had that like hydraulic canister, you know, that is effectively mm-hmm. what Kitty SS became. And I drove it around for a couple days on what, because that wasn't there, were effectively non existent shocks and springs. And I would hit the brakes and go, boink, boink, you know, <laughs> like pogo to a stop. And it was yeah. genuinely terrifying. So, uh, magnetic ride when it goes is kind of the same thing yeah but well and the suburban already has a rake to it as well yes like the suburban already sits down so now it's like down even lower so after you after you removed the shit that was fucking with it yeah yeah so right so which was the the leveling kit i had on it right Mm-hmm. And my issue for the leveling, taking the leveling kit off was the bottom bushing on the driver's side strut. The bushing is like moving back and forth. So like the shock is hitting the lower control arm under load, which mm-hmm. was driving me nuts. Still does it. Um, but I'm going to plug in this device to the ODB2 port that will tell the computer all of the suspension is acting fine the entire time. You're good. And as soon as it starts to tell the computers everything's good, then I can pull all of the electronic shocks or struts and shocks off mm-hmm. from the front and the back. I can replace with conventional um, struts up front. Yeah. Yep, a, a coilover. So the Monroe yeah. ones are the best budget friend. They um, recommend the Fox uh 2.0s as they're mm-hmm. like this is the best one you can throw up front um and you get about two inches of lift out of it which oh wait mm-hmm. oh my that's almost back to the leveling kit i was looking for mm-hmm. so uh mm-hmm. if anybody has a friend at fox who wants to send me some discounted shocks and some shots like we need to start reaching out to people um what about like uh things... is there anybody else that makes stuff like bill stein or anybody uh, there are other things you can go with. I've just seen that the the two I just listed are the ones that they seem to have the most success with. The, to be honest, the Monroes, they were like, that'll last the life of the vehicle. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> How long so, does your vehicle last? <laughs> I was say my mine tend to last a little longer than other people, but um, we'll, we'll see. Challenge we'll see. accepted. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I was like, well, I'm going to beat the shit out of those. Um <laughs> Uh-huh. And then for the rear, they were like, you can throw almost any conventional GM shock on the back. The springs are there. And the air ride, you don't really have to take the air ride off the back. You can kind of leave it. Um, yeah. when, once you, And then they have like dust plugs to go into the electronic ports where you would have been connected before. So that way you don't have shit getting in there and messing with the system anyway. Um, so expensive electrical tape. Okay. Yeah, but like 3D printed things that click into the connectors <laughs> and make joking. you feel better. Like, I'm <laughs> joking. don't rag I'm on it. Don't rag on it. I want it to work. Um, don't jinx I, it, Ross. 
Um, but once all that's put in, it it should the ride quality. I was I talked to Max a little bit today about like my O3 Yukon XL, and he was like, "Oh yeah, we can get your ride back to that ride." And I was like, "Thank the Lord," because that thing rode amazing. Like, um, there's no SUV ride. No body on frame SUV ride like that era GMT GMT eight hundred. Yeah, no, <laughs> they're just it, like it was just because there wasn't the weight of the body that safety regulations and modern technology carried with it that made ride kind of uncomfortable. It was still like the nineties, like. Oh, it was you like, got it was, traction control and airbags. You, pff, you're fucking good, dude. It was and Cadillac like, floaty. It was fantastic, it was, but it really was be, because it was like it was. I mean, '90s GM Cadillac but tech that, that yeah made its way into all the other trucks. Yeah, but that oh. that truck felt planted though, like that all wheel drive system, the six liter V8. Like I could. I oh, hammered six. some on ramps in that thing. I loved it. Yeah. Um, if if it hadn't started to shit the bed at two hundred forty eight thousand miles, I would have kept it. But it was going great. to be they're, way they're more. Great drives. Expensive. You know I'll defend the uh, the Av- the GMT eight hundred Avalanche. Yes, I know. I die. Okay. And uh, and even like the Tahoe with barn doors, so good. They still look good. You find one with the, like a, a clean Z71 Tahoe barn doors and it's not bucked, call me. Sorry, I don't like the barn doors. I'm a lift gate guy. Oh, I love the barn, barn doors. Right. Yeah, I like There's standing nothing underneath better something than... when it rains, guys. I like the lift gate better. <laughs> you can open the barn doors and put an umbrella on top of them and then you don't get rained on. Or you could just sit in the car. <laughs> or you just what? sit in the car. With, there's no rain gutter at the back of the vehicle. The umbrella puts the rain on the roof, and then it comes down and goes right down on you. If the umbrella is on the back of the roof with the side, so- if you have a big enough umbrella, it's on the roof with the. All those umbrellas umbrella have going- ridges to the edges. They're not. None We're of them are flat, about- tight okay. seals. <laughs> I Just have a roof lived this, um, but I, I am now living the uh, the Lexus GX life where. Oh, it's raining, and you have a, a side door. Side, yeah. Oh, sad. Can you um, open your glass with that giant spare tire on the back? I can. Okay. It does, in fact, open. Yeah. yeah just curious. <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with whether it's raining or not. Um, well, it just means it wouldn't be. Yeah. You get a little coverage from the glass, like it would be. No. No, you just sit in the car and, and cry. Um, sit in the car and cry. <laughs> hey, do XC90s have split tailgates? The first gen XC90 did. Did it? It did. The second gen does not. Uh, and fun fact about why are we talking about XC90s? Tailgate? Yeah, but why? Are we, why, why is it? Just that was my pivot. Topic? It was. I was looking at one in traffic the other day, and I was like, "That looks like it's got an up and down." down. Uh, yeah. the The first gen XC90 had a split tailgate, and it was the only vehicle to ever have no recorded deaths attributed to it. Well, isn't that Volvo's goal by like 2030? Is that nobody dies in a Volvo? Yes. So like all Volvo's vehicle on sale from like 2004 to 2012, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> uh, tapping out, tapping out. Okay. Can we talk about Spen's Forerunner? Yes. So we can like go somewhere. Um, We've had some changes in the forerunner recently. So uh, for, well, I, I need breaks. We, need Do breaks. I need breaks? Okay. Yes. Well, well, you um, need breaks. <laughs> yes. We're Stopping gonna, would be nice. Oh, how many miles actually, one second. Just, just to throw it back to the avalanche for one second, Chris, one time, I did lose my brakes completely. <laughs> completely. 
truck filled with smoke. I was driving back to campus and was like, I can either go down this hill into town and take out like 50 people, or I can pull a 90 degree right turn at like 40 miles per hour and go into campus just keep up a hill. In a circle, and I just drove in, I drove in a circle around the parking lot and just threw the, the e-brake on. <laughs> did you at least like downshift to low? Like, did you try to like get the engine? Yeah, out? no, I, I coasted, I threw it in neutral and just coasted and it just, okay kept going and then i finally just got slow enough i probably circled for like 10 minutes yeah um <laughs> anyways uh that truck truck was surprisingly not rusty underneath but the no but it was abused the 800 by brakes Ross. the brake lines were notorious for having yes. their their time their time um yeah um Anyways. Anyway, so we'll we'll figure out your your breaks. Um, yes, I'm not going to do them, and you're not going to do them. But we are going to get some no. good breaks on your truck. But yes. you don't need as good brakes as you thought you needed because you have much lighter wheels and tires on each corner. So why don't you Correct. tell us and tell everybody listening about them? <laughs> um, so the last set that I had on, let me just start by by saying what I used to have. I used to have uh, Falcon Wild Peaks. Um, I had gone up to 275, 70, 17s. On a, um, a 2022 Forerunner SR5 with a two-inch front level? I have front and rear. The Pro Comp, front and rear. I didn't know. I yeah, haven't I seen think that picture. That, I think, that's actually a good picture. I think it's two in, two in the front and uh, three in the front, two in the rear. <laughs> uh that's called school bus yeah no no that's not <laughs> um but <laughs> oh, gonna get canceled. okay continue if that's what gets you canceled um we have a big enough audience and, and i had uh, watching the morning show <laughs> yeah watching the morning show so and i had bought some knockoff trd replica wheels um problem with those was that the weight per corner was just ridiculous it was not light i was rush what did we figure it was like, it was like 32 oh. or something no those are the new wheels no the old wheel new ones are like 25 the old wheels were like the, the tier oh yeah, yeah yeah the Cheer D Pro knockoffs yeah. that you had were like 32 pounds per wheel. Yes. So that that set I could never balance at all. I just never got them balanced, never rode well. I had them on for probably about 55,000 miles. Um, Which 55,000 wear... miles from an all-terrain tire is unbalanced pretty, and pretty good. yeah i mean it was it was pretty solid i got good use out of them but i was not um i was just ready for a change i had i had toils on on previous vehicles and really liked them and so um thanks to toil we were able to get some tires in and throw some uh open country at3s on uh, and I went down in size to, uh, I went back down to two sixty fives. Um, right. So, so a few problems here. So in going which is the up same to, width as a suburban. In going yeah. up to the bigger tires that you got for the Forerunner originally, it rubbed the shit up, out of the fender. Yeah, and they <laughs> were what? They were E rated tires. Yes. Which for a a daily is like just so unnecessary yeah and so heavy and like what did we say there were they were like 56 pounds a tire or something for those falcons yeah I, yeah I was up around 90 90 pounds a corner between the wheels Good and the board. tires yeah which yeah. is more than yeah. I have for the 285s with the motegis um and like that's 
That's a lot of weight. Like, uh, unsprung mass is an enormous impact on on just drivability in general. Also, this is a great yeah. picture. This is a really pretty picture of this set of wheels and tires. And yeah, thanks. I took it with my own hands. It, 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 <laughs> it, it, it's a great picture, but it also really maximizes the fact that you need to fucking take those lug nuts off and spray paint them black. <laughs> we, I kind of like looked red good in red at first because I, don't they, like I got them when I had the TRD wheels or knockoff oh, yeah. TRD wheels, and so there was red in it. And I was like, I this looks awesome. Um, so, anyways, we so you also... went from you went from thirty two pounds per wheel and fifty call it fifty five pounds per tire to twenty five pounds per wheel and thirty nine pounds per tire. Yeah, and it's noticeable accelerating in it. Um, <laughs> it quite it. quite noticeable. I'm not saying it's a rocket ship now because it's not right. But no, like, but the the, the four liters, the four liter, and like. It's never going to be a rocket ship. Like, yes. My stock exactly. fifth gen 4 wasn't a, but a, it's wasn't noticeable. a rocket ship. But are, are you getting yeah. like and 40 or 50 miles per tank more? No. I'm also driving like an asshole, and I'm going to be upfront about that okay. because I am like, <laughs> <laughs> because I am like, ooh, I can accelerate a little bit harder now. Okay. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't get that I am getting on, in the uh, gas, right? Like you put your foot that, down and yeah. you're like, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't like, I don't have that pushback. It's not me. screaming at me to say stop. Yeah. Um, but I'm getting probably one and a half miles per gallon better. Um, so yeah, it probably comes out to about, about, you know, 40 miles, whatever. Yeah, I mean, um, on a 20, what is it, 23 gallon tank, that's significant. Yeah. So, um, and so just to finish the setup, we also put, um, the American racing AR 172s on, um, uh, which Ross, you should get, um, <laughs> uh, and they look awesome. Uh, the, the craziest thing was that the, when I got the wheels and I weighed them, I weighed each one individually and there was only variation by like I think I think the biggest variation I had was 0. 0.2 something pounds. Like really? they were all Desperate. almost exact. Yeah. It was it was incredible. Which scale? Um, is that the scale in shipping? Yes, that's the UPS <laughs> computer scale. Okay. Um that's that scale has seen some shit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I used to stand on it when I was a kid. But yeah, um, yeah, that's that's um, sounds, sounds like you weren't the only one based on Ross's reaction there. Hey, Ross, what you put on that scale? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Um, so, yeah, it, it rides incredibly well. Um, super quiet. Um, and <clears throat> I was able to get them on like right before we had about two inches of snow which was great to just go around the neighborhood and go down some streets and say, hmm, let's see what this thing does in the snow. And I tried as hard as I possibly could, and I could not lose traction. I love Toyas in the snow, especially Couldn't. the open country AT3s. Like Lo they're in the Sequoia. Locked up brakes. Yeah, I locked up the brakes on <laughs> a bunch of pretty big hills and just could not, could not lose any traction. Um, yeah. Ross, that's I took my, it on. That's what no, Sarah has on her Sequoia in the ice storm the other day, and she made it to work. Like it's nothing's supposed to work in the ice, but yet yeah. those toys those powered through. Like I, I we're nothing. adamantly pro Toyo AT3 on this show. Yeah, and and I don't want to discount the Falcon Wild Peaks at all because yeah. I did drive those in the worst ice storm I've ever been in in my life. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty soon after I had gotten the tires and I am convinced that I would not have made it to work if not for those tires. If I mm -hmm. still had the stock uh, 400 oh, tires no. on, no, I would, no, no, I would no. not have made it. No chance. Um, and I was the only person that was able to drive on the roads that day. Like everyone yeah. else was just in the trees. 
Yeah. I was like, yeah. I would stop, but I oh. can't. <laughs> I, mean, you could... I, I, was really like, I was like, I was like, I really wish I could help. In those situations, though, you, it, it's 25% tire, 75% driver. Like, yeah, but bad tires don't leave you a ton of Bad tires don't help, but ice is not uh, friendly to, you know, uh, starting or stopping or turning or like (laughs) anything in terms of putting out fires in a fire truck. Um, Yeah. I see Adam. Yeah, I mean, new setup is great, and it has kind of, in a way, um, it was also because the ride quality was just so bad, because I had never balanced the last wheels and tires. It wasn't ride Um, quality, it was the fact that your steering wheel shook back and forth (laughs) violently at speed. Chris, I'm not exaggerating, at 65 or 70 miles per hour, his steering wheel... With the Falcons and those fake TRD Pro wheels, the steering wheel would vibrate like both front tires had been like hit by a fucking like sledgehammer. Sounds like death wobble. By Thor. I oh. notoriously drive with my knees where I'm like shoving some chips in my face or something, and I'm like, mm, I'm just gonna steer with my knees. I could I, not I, do it with them. I've been in like Jeeps you have with, to you had to have your hands on the wheel. I've been in Jeeps with death wobble that was less bad than, <laughs> than how those tires were weren't balanced. And that's not just limited to you. Like fake TRD Pro wheels is one thing. People have had instances of those being poorly balanced. And the Falcons are also not notorious, but a lot of people have had issues with the Falcons being hard to balance. So, yeah. Um, but it, it, it has in a way um, kind of like rekindled my love for the forerunner because I felt like when I originally got it, I was like, wow, this thing is great. It's reliable. It starts every time I go out there. I never have to worry about it. Like it's super easy to maintain. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were all these things that I loved about it. And then I kind of got into that lull where I was like, I don't know how much I love this thing anymore. I really like it, but I don't know if I love it. And getting these wheels and tires on, just aesthetically looking at it, I'm like, damn, that looks really good again. And then like, hmm, kind of hot. Like, I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go home? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, I hope you want to go home because that's where you're taking it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't have an option on this one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's, it's, a consensual, a, it's such a, a consensual thing. Yes, 100%. It's such a weird dance to live because you need to rely on that truck every day. And like, yeah. You and I have talked up and down about how the perfect perfect car for you is a Golf R with the back seats folded down, but like Yep. Uh two things. First of all, if you get a foot of snow, you're not getting where you need to get with a a golf R and yeah, I'm not like, throwing Toyos on the golf R. <laughs> like, sure, you can <laughs> the you could get on there, there with a golf R if it's plowed, but you can't guarantee that where you need to go is plowed. Um, and Correct. also, like, just the reliability factor of things, yeah, you know, like, there is as of this recording, it's Tuesday, January 23rd at 10.17 uh, in 2024. I don't think there is a more reliable vehicle on sale than the 5th Gen 4Runner. The The GX460 yeah. is no longer on sale. You, you can't get one. So I don't think there's a yeah. more dependable vehicle. Yeah, and I mean, that's not just that. limited to age, but also mileage. Like, you can high miles onto it which is something that i do you know what year is your truck 22 how many miles uh, are i bought it in bought it in late october early november 22 no yeah, uh, yeah. no 21 22. yeah 
No, 21. I bought it in 21, but it's a 22. Okay. Yes, I've that had it for sense. two years. That makes sense. So you've yeah. got it for two and years and change, and you have almost 60,000 miles on it. No, I have more. I have almost 63 now. Oh. Six. <laughs> yeah. In two yeah. years. That's a lot. That's okay. a lot. I thought yeah. I drove a lot yeah. last year, 22,000 miles. You're at 33. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Um, well, so. it's a, it, I'm doing on average six-ish hundred a week. So. Good Lord. You no. Know, yeah. Um, I, I've been there. I've, I've done 35 yeah. a year, so I, I, I know the life. Um, no wonder you yeah. guys flip vehicles so fast. You spend so much time in them. Yes. Yeah, that's why I got rid of the Wrangler so quickly and bought the Forerunner. Because yeah. I was on the highway all the time. I was like, oh my God. This is miserable. <laughs> this is so loud. Yeah. Like, this is, I was like, first of all, this is so loud. Second of all, there was no dead pet. I know Ross said, you know, you said that you could buy one, but there was no natural dead pedal next to the clutch. It was just, like, and I had just torn ligaments in my ankle, and I was like, "This sucks." That time, <laughs> my ankle hurts every good. day. <laughs> that time was really it, not good. Chris, it was very funny actually. I got the Jeep. I got the Wrangler the day before Ross and Sam and I went down to Delaware. So, to, so and... first to back up <laughs> on the story. Um, we are in the off-road world because our dad had a YJ Wrangler right. that he indoctrinated us with. Um, Spen and I did what we will hopefully again do at some point in our life, and we ordered almost identical vehicles. Identical, uh, just different colors. Different colors, and I had like two different options on mine yeah. through the same dealer, um, and we were planning to just drive, you know, fly down and drive back with them. Uh, and Spen took delivery of his, and I didn't of mine because I bought a house and had a child. Cooler than a Jeep. Yeah, yeah. And that, <laughs> Both cooler and than a Jeep. Sold my sold the Forerunner that you sold me and sold Miata to somebody named Spencer. And, uh, you know, bought Dan Edmonds' Jeep and then found out that I was having a kid and sold Dan Edmonds' Jeep. So... <laughs> Weird, weird fucking world. Yeah. But the first time Sam saw me with that Jeep, she was like, Ross, I don't think he likes it. He <laughs> I, no. just, I just got the day before. She's yeah. like, I don't think he likes it. Well, like, you had a bad, bad delivery experience with it, which probably didn't Yeah, help. getting it shipped up from Tennessee without... The dealer was... Um, what was the dealer's name? Um, I'll, I'll think of it, but he was incredible they to work great. with, but were, just, yeah. just getting the, um, just organizing the shipping on my own without actually going down there myself to load it onto a truck was a nightmare. Should have right. just um, flown down, driven it back. Like. Should have. Anyways. I said time. Anyways. Um, I don't know. I think we're at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Spends for oh, spends for runner. Um, what's <laughs> yes, he next? went from the Jeep to the Forerunner. Went from the Jeep to the Forerunner, yeah. and has had to think less in the to- in the sixty thousand miles that he's owned the Forerunner, less about how much he hates it than he did in the sixty hours that he had the Jeep. <laughs> It was okay. It was, it was like 25 days, 25 days, (laughs) 30 days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll round up. Dude. Fair enough. The current Um, gen face started in 2014. Yep. Has now been around for a decade. Yeah. How long ago do you think they paid off the tooling? Uh, by 2013, <laughs> I think they paid off too long. Like before it was even out with the new face, they'd already the paid fi- off that Well, the fifth, I mean, <laughs> because they tool up before it's actually going. Um, yeah. And if anybody and has a like... four-cylinder fifth-gen 4Runner, let me know. 
curious. I got one. Do you want it? <laughs> you don't know. Four <laughs> cylinder? No, you don't. Oh, no. Never mind. I don't. Yeah. They made an unknown number of four cylinder fifth gens in 2010. And uh, it's a curious abomination of things. I'm, I'm Is that curious. the one that was only rear wheel drive, too? No, I believe it was four wheel drive and two wheel drive option. So, yeah. I heard four runner and I was like, you want it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, want it? you got it um, he just spent, a great deal. he spent all that time talking about how much he loves it again now and he's immediately like do you want it if anybody listening or anybody who might tangentially be listening knows a company that makes superchargers for the 5th gen 4runner like oh, yeah. Magnuson or you know companies like that contact spencer ballot <laughs> yes it's very easy spencer ballot at gmail.com there you go <laughs> there you go because the trajectory here is spencer race car? has a can manorick huh i said race car <laughs> no not race car no spen has a can maverick our our general plan is to unfuck its problems in the next lots of problems next three months um is forerunner we're gonna keep being awesome until the day it dies in 10 years when it has five hundred thousand miles um, <laughs> then he's gonna buy so in the interim some kind of you know fast vehicle that he can dick around with on the daily and weekend um but we would but a supercharged forerunner would be a pretty great daily for him so yeah yeah that would up. make a big hit difference up. hit us up yeah towing a, I'll, I'll clip that out yeah <laughs> hit us up hey hi magnus and hi Hi. Spence Pro girl Toyota. Spence girl Toyota told us that if we did anything to it, it would be covered. So yes, yeah. She girl didn't say that forced induction like, wouldn't be covered. She's like, whatever you do to it, it's not going to avoid the warranty. I was like, you bet. <laughs> Are we? Can I get that in writing? <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I actually left her a so voicemail far, like a month ago. I left her a voicemail like a month ago to be like. So I'm thinking about doing a supercharger and I was wondering if it would void the warranty and she never called me back. <laughs> she probably doesn't work there anymore. First of all. Oh, she does. <laughs> Second she of does. all, um, that dealer has been great to you. You had, yeah, they a, have. what was the problem? You had a, rear... when I sold the Wrangler, no, when I sold no. the Wrangler, I, oh no, that was a different dealer. No. Oh, was it? Different dealer Wait, you with had, the, rear, the uh, rear controller. We're actually still recording. This is remarkable. Spen had one of the only problems <laughs> ever recorded with a 5th Gen 4Runner in the first 100,000 yeah. miles. Which I'm convinced was a result of driving 55,000 miles with horribly unbalanced wheels and tires that were just abusing every joint possible in the thing. Um, what was and, the problem and what was the so fix? I had a quickly I had a squeak, we, have, we have three I had, minutes yeah. I I'm had a squeaking off. wouldn't be the first time um, <laughs> I had a squeaking in the front right and so it was only happening when I turned so took a video sent it immediately to Ross and was like do you think my tie rod could be fucked doesn't seem I likely. Like, how can but, I tell anything from this video of but, dirt? But it it's like I'm parking the truck and I'm just turning the wheel and that's the only time you hear the noise and the noise sounds like it's coming from the front right. Turns out it wasn't the tie rod. It was the rear control arm that the somehow... Rear. the It was somehow one of those amazing the, instances of noise like... Like just travel. any kind of and movement in the steering wheel, flexing the chassis, and sound traversing 
metal and going from the unibody form. underneath. Not unibody, yes. body on frame. And, right. Sorry. And yes. And so body twist. Any any minimal mechanical physical metal twist doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I brought it to the dealer and they said it's a rear control arm, I said, there's absolutely no way. I heard it, the noise. It's coming from the front. And they're like, all right, well, we'll just replace the rear control arm anyways. And then if that's not it, we'll investigate further. So I said, okay, great. And the funny thing was about a... Ding. Yes. And the funny thing was about a week later, I was having service totally separate on a, um, a machine at work. And the kid that came in to service our machine told me he used to work at Toyota as a tech. I told him what was going on immediately before I even mentioned a rear control arm. He's like, oh, rear control arm. <laughs> it's a no issue. Like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> because for the fifth gen four, like that's there are known known issues like that. Yeah, you know? it's crazy. Yep. So that's a great yeah. spot to add. At, yeah, it's like you're the one person that found a problem. Yeah, <laughs> leave it to me. Leave it to you. And your knockoff TRD Pro Wheels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if anyone wants to buy them, <laughs> I still have them. Oh, only got we've done three such hubcaps. a great job selling them tonight. <laughs> no. They look great if you want to make tables out of them. If you want to, Coffee tables. Yeah. Side tables. Put them on, put them on the Can-Am. <laughs> And so you could suffer on the can. You just, you just said you're going to have to take three better. months to unfuck the can am. Like, yeah. yeah. My my wheels are my front wheels are pointed at each other. Oh, speaking of end links, yeah. diametrically opposed. Yeah. I did see a new uh, Ford Explorer like that one day in the middle of the street, and I was like, "That's an issue, dude." <laughs> I was. On my way to pick up Pat from the train station, and I was behind a current generation Ford Explorer on Toyo mud terrains. Oh. Like, the most unreasonably aggressive tire for that kind of vehicle. Yeah. Like, what are you I saw this. Yours? I saw this today while I was in traffic. And I was like, how do you know he's never lowered his tailgate? You're like, that's not that's not a Mack truck. <laughs> it's not a Mack truck. That light is, is not, whatever light he purchased to add LED lights there is not sized for to go below his tailgate. It goes across yeah. either edge of the tailgate. It just crushed, it's going to crush it. <laughs> right. I was like, what? So you just know he never, and like at least the tunnel looks like it's been opened before. So like he's still using the bed, but I was also, just like, that is odd. That Chevy badge is that's not there from the factory. This one, <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised he hadn't have it turned the other way. <laughs> there's there's a lot going on. Also, I I was behind a truck. A, like 1980s Ram Charger pickup after I dropped Pat off at the train that had like Trump 2020 like all like every single one of those fucking stickers on the back I was like oh my god how, never surrender how are you in Stanford Connecticut like what the actual fuck you know, you can't, you're not, how? Oh my As my 12-year-old would say, you are not him. Oh my <laughs> God. Like Connecticut plates, not even like Connecticut. Like Spen knows there's white Connecticut veteran yeah. plates. Not even that. Like just straight up. I can't, I can't wait for Ross to experience shit. Gen Alpha vocabulary oh yeah because dealing with gen z vocabulary fucking sucks so gen alpha vocabulary is going to be even weirder is that what daisy is daisy's alpha hieroglyphics dude 
the more I hear Gen Z talk, the more I am actually like on the team of Idiocracy is a fucking documentary, and that shit's going to be real. What is a documentary? I mean, this, it, this it, at the question. time it was satirical. Now it's starting to Dude, become real. <laughs> I'm telling you, I watched Contagion recently, and it was it was not a like big movie. It was a it was a documentary. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have watched that movie, but it is eerily. No, I don't do horror films. Um, it was. It's not. It's really not a horror film. It's like a thriller kind of thing. But it was like I Michael was, Jackson. Huh? I've watched that one. <laughs> um, no, it was like 2011, and the parallels with COVID. Like I was watching, I was like, like is this is just. It was prediction. There was no. Yeah, no it's nine this. years early. Yep. All right, oh, I'm gonna wrap up the show because both of you look tired all of a sudden. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So many, so uh, many, just not good bobs. Spend not, what, not what a good time, start, Bob. Spend our our YouTube channel is gonna be called Not Good Bob. <laughs> NGB. <laughs> No, it's not. That's <sighs> sad. We always wanted to make t-shirts um, when I was a young teacher that said GFY on it, and we would tell the kids it stands for good for you. Good for you. Well, that's but in reality. Like, I, everybody I, knows. This is on the record because we are recording. Um, Pat, who was here earlier with that we spoke about, um, he wanted to do the thing where it's like a uh garage but you fix your own stuff so like you basically yeah. rent space so you rent the bay space basically right yeah so my pitch was the brand name is called fix up your own stuff foyos but that's a misnomer because it's actually in actuality it's fuck up your own shit fuck up your own shit <laughs> <laughs> nice that works Um, you can rate and review us on iTunes. No, iTunes. Good lord, Ross. Oh. Spotify. Clearly, can... I, I opened I opened a show notes because I wanted to read the end of it, and clearly, you copy and pasted from a very old show. On this <laughs> one. <laughs> I didn't. Mm.